Welcome to IDB everyone, it is Andrew here. The new iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 both finally support wireless charging, but what does that mean? We're going to go into detail on everything you need to know about wireless charging and how it pertains to the newest iPhones. The iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 adopted the Qi, spelled QI, wireless charging standard from the Wireless Power Consortium. It is just one of a few different wireless charging standards that have been floating around for some time. The other big prominent one is coming from the AirFuel Alliance. While Android phones have adopted wireless charging for some time now, the adoption has been quite slow. Their drawbacks to wireless charging, including the fact you still need wires, its slowness, and those competing standards. With those competing standards, it's been hard for manufacturers to choose and places like Starbucks to build them in. In fact, Starbucks actually built in a different type of wireless charging that will luckily be able to be upgraded to work with Qi and the iPhones, but it has just made the marketplace pretty murky as far as wireless charging goes thus far. Now that Apple has entered the market and put their backing behind one of the wireless charging standards, hopefully adoption will skyrocket like it has not in the past. So how does the wireless charging work? Well, the primary technology behind it is called inductive power transfer. So there is a coil, a receiving coil, and a transmitting coil in both the iPhone as well as the charging pad. The Qi charger will intermittently send out kind of a homing signal, and that'll be out there to detect if there is any Qi compatible devices nearby. So when it does come within a few millimeters of the charging pad, it'll immediately start the charging process. At a high level, an electromagnetic field will be created by the coil inside of the Qi charger. Then, whenever that compatible device, iPhone 8, 10, or any other Android devices that support it, come near it, literally just a few millimeters away, that electromagnetic field will induce a current in the receiving coil of the device. That then will charge up your iPhone. Now let's take a look at the limits of wireless charging, because while wireless charging sounds really nice, it still involves wires. You still have to have something plugged in to actually charge your device. And there are a number of Qi enabled chargers out there. We've looked at a few, we've got a whole bunch of them here sprinkled throughout this video in particular. But in particular, you do have to have that charger. You can't just wireless charge your device from anywhere. You have to have it setting down, which may or may not be convenient. In fact, you don't really see too many that are propped up. There are definitely some, but most of them are laying down flat on the counter and takes up a lot of space compared to like a vertical dock or vertical charger or something. Uh, there's still just a lot of disappointments in that reality of it. On top of that, the charging speeds are also a bit slower than wired charging, actually quite a bit slower. At launch, the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 only support 5 watts of power through wireless charging. Qi can support up to 15 watts of power, and there are a few chargers out there that already support that 15 watts, but the iPhone is not one of them. Soon, Apple will release a software update that will enable 7.5 watts of power, but that's still not as much as you can get from wire charging, especially when the new iPhones support fast charge, which is even better. Let us know what you think of wireless charging below in the comments and any of your favorite wireless chargers. Go ahead and click on that big red subscribe button so we can keep more videos like this going and check out all of our other features on the new iPhone 8 and iPhone 10. Till next time, it's Andrew for IDB.